in the bottom right here in the red. He is for onside gaming. He looks so good in Valencia. It's Neeb. His opponent in the upper left in the blue. Stuck in Valencia now, but playing damn well. He is Estrella. Loran, when did I have the, or since when did I have the Dancing Zealot? I've had it for a while. I, um, I built a tool. I, I built something into my, the same tool that gives me tickers of results. That's not really huge, uh, keyed to, um, a loser's bracket format. But I, uh, I have a little thing in there that says, okay, give me the winner of the last race and, and throw up in a browser overlay, a, a gif of the race that won. So I got at least one, uh, at least two dancing gifts from every race that have been matted out as a transparency. And it dances. Yeah, uh, Quidditch Club, uh, PGP News. I played Quidditch in undergrad. I played on a very good adult uh, community team, adult club team uh, during my masters. We were number two team in the West. Um, and then unfortunately COVID happened. And then when I was in Dallas last summer, I was I was practicing with the the, uh, the Dallas team was not incredible, uh, but I was at least practicing with them. It was off season, of course. I don't know that I don't know that I'm ever going to get a chance to play Quidditch again re uh, reasonably, which is a shame. Dartmouth doesn't have a team, and by the time I'm done with Dartmouth, I don't know that's going to be <laughs> necessarily responsible. Ooh, Neeb, proxy gold. I don't know that it's necessarily going to be responsible for me to be playing a full contact uh, tackle sport. Nah, that's not. I'll be 29. I'll still be young in the prime of my youth as uh, now Neeb is going to find this. Not quite on the timing that we saw Estrella find uh, Trigger's Proxy, but even still. And I hope you all I, I hope you all saw Crater versus Neeb. I mean, I was sad that Neeb didn't move to the round of four. But how can you be upset about the... Uh, the, the, seeing the result, seeing the reaction from a creator, he, he started to realize he was winning that fight on the map. It was a massive comeback fight. And he started to realize he was winning. He just starts yelling. And then he pops off when he finally wins the game. Oh, man. You love to see it. But anyway, Neve looking to absolutely looking to put the hammer and tongs to Estrella's proxy location here. Now, I believe Estrella knows that Neve knows. So Estrella has a pile on here, but it is four stalkers of two. So Estrella's got to run away from that one. In fact, he's going to lose one. He's going to lose not the second, but the pylon doesn't get canceled. And with this proxy pylon popping up, we are going to test the plosive filter on my microphone. The proxy pylon popping up. But here come the stalkers finding their way to this gold base. Now it is four gateways to two. So yeah, uh, Neem wants to get aggressive, but his gateways are not yet done. So ooh, it's a bit of a bait here from Estrella. He traps him in. Two stalkers go down and... Uh, the ebb and flow, the push me pull you goes the other way. Stray's gonna find this gateway and it's actually just gonna get denied. So now it's four stocks to three. Stray in the advantage. Estrella, sure, he's he's down three workers, but this is one of those cases where his, his gold minerals are actually a big deal. That being said, though, Oracle flies away in the main base. The stockers are not there, and six workers are going down. Suddenly, that worker advantage is a lot more impactful. So Stray is gonna have to find his way uh, into his opponent's main base. He's gonna have to go very all in because. Only reason this Oracle stops killing workers is because it runs out of energy. Stalkers in the main base, though, trying to knock one down. One falls. The Zealots now warped in. They're just going to be uh, something you got to micro against, really. They shouldn't kill all that much, but now here come the Stalkers of Astraea. We're looking at 8 to 4, 8 to 3. Probes are going to get pulled. Yes, Astraea has lost a ton of economy, but if he can punch through right here, will not matter. Oracle's trying to add their glass cannon DPS. The Stalkers continue to fall, but only four Stalkers remain for Astraea right now. Make it three. Citizens arrest on the probes on the north side are so damn good, and Neem will hold. Oracle, 12 kills to its name. Astraea cannot reasonably mine from that base, so the Oracle We'll run south now. And by the way, the Oracle that, uh, I believe that second Oracle. Okay, no, it did die. I wouldn't even mind a second Oracle. Uh, does the camera scroll automatically with probes? If I, you, if you select a unit in the observer mode, the Oracle flies in four more, five more. This is, this Oracle is stupid low. 
how to get six more workers. And honestly, uh, shutting down e shutting down probe production at the gold or probe count at the gold is uh, worth, I mean, it's worth it one and a half times almost killing workers in, in Astraea's main. So that one is the one that's really going to hurt him. Let me look at the income advantage here. And he now taken his natural. So if I go and I, I select it as something, I'll select a, a probe, sure. Uh, if, I, if I press, if I, I, I just hit control shift F. So now when these units move, the camera's going to follow automatically. There we go. Otherwise, I'm drag scrolling. Okay, here come double oracles. The shield battery says, uh, we don't care about that anymore, but there are enough stalkers for the moment. Oh, getting the low. Oh, actually missed target fire there. That could have been a dead oracle. Oh, ho, ho, stays alive. At very mistargeted that could have been a dead oracle that could have with the shield batteries that could have bore the shield battery at the gold at least that could have been a lot less pressure on his mineral line but instead the oracles now they're gonna fly their way north there's only one stalker here and neve is gonna lead with the healthy one but Astraea's on top of things oracle flies in though he says oh yeah you're gonna target the injured one that's fine i got a full health oracle here so four more workers have died oracle flying out on the backside because there's only one stalker neve is just oh man Neeb is leveled up even from DreamHack. I, yeah, he's a game where he's ahead right now, but he is just feasting on Astraea. And Astraea is not playing poorly. We got to point that out. Astraea is not playing poorly. Neeb is just playing so much better here. Now, here comes the pressure from Astraea once again. He wants to make something happen before he gets too bad, but he sees what there is there, and he says, no, I can't do it. Neeb, 1-0. in the bottom left here in the red up one zero in the series thus far with an incredible hold in the first game it's neve in the upper right in the blue he's down one let's see whether you can tie things up for alpha x folks it's astraea i mean last rock i'm not sure i would say that that was a close thing holding that with the with the pro pull there it was eight stalkers to three that was a close thing indeed but astray was able to make it work or knee was able to make it work excuse me and now this is this is a slightly more standard map, and I, I do enjoy it. Tropical Sacrifice is a really cool map. Where I'm not always the, a big fan of maps that kind of make it easy to get four bases. Um, as a Zerg player, I'm a fan. As a, someone who has to play against players that don't play Zerg, I'm not a fan. <laughs> um, but the, the cool thing about Tropical Sacrifice, and really the majority of the maps in this pool, is it's really hard to get a fifth. You, know, you get your four, and the, these two are easily enough to take. It's either defended by a choke or a ramp and a choke, or maybe multiple ramps, but same idea. Uh, getting this fifth base, though, much harder. Do you, do you want to take this as a fifth base? Good luck. Uh, and this one is so far away from the third or the fourth that it is also difficult. So you can get up to your mid-game tech nice enough, but uh, good luck going further than there. Good luck going further than that. That was, in fact, how we saw a laser losing his PVCs uh, in Valencia, where he would get a, he would get strong, get four bases, a good supply, and he could just never take his fifth. Against Showtime. And against... Um, was it just against Showtime? I think so. That's a lot of... Uh, it's a lot of fun uh, PG Vin, who's uh, Quidditch's. You... It, it, plays all, it plays like a mixture of, like... Rugby, dodgeball, and basketball. Um, but anyway, Adept on the other side. But Stalker and Zealot actually coming in from Astraea. Now this Adept is just going to, of course, complete its shade. Maybe find way find a way in. But I believe this is a full wall from Astraea. So I don't think the Adept is going to get too much done. Not a full wall, of course, for me. But he does have an Oracle popping out, which means the Zealot's not going to do all that much. Uh, notice the Zealot runs forward a little bit. Getting a first swipe off on the on the Stalker before it, runs, before it gets in vision. Uh, which does now mean that the Stalker and the Zealot uh, combo of Neve, technically they win the fight, but it's just going to be a recall. Is he even... Yeah, don't waste the full Beam on that one. So, the units get out. Adept on the other side. So, 
now we have the trinity of protoss units stalker zealot adept putting pressure onto this position from astray meanwhile oracle into the main base but of course with a shield battery here this is not really going to get all that much stasis trap okay <laughs> you can actually kill a stasis trap oh nice job there only one and it's going to force a recall which uh, will happen with oracles now being armored units not light units Uh, but anyway, so technically, if you pull your probes immediately, you can kill a, a stasis trap. So notice the stray, he kind of pulled there. He was waiting for it. So Neve kind of outjuked him and dropped the stasis trap somewhere else, which eh, it only got one worker, but it was a little extra mining time that Neve was able to force. PGB in the house. I have no idea what you're saying there. Okay. I don't know what demon you're trying to summon. But now here come, here comes double oracles out on the map from Neve. He hasn't found much value. I mean, he denied a little bit of mining time, but really not all that much. But two oracles are better than one, infinitely so, because they punch through shield batteries that you might not otherwise be able to do. And there's only one stock here in the mineral line, so four workers will die, five workers will die, six workers will... Uh, okay, it's going to be six. I feel like if uh, Neve had just gone and tried to chase that down, he would have been much happier. But, ooh, look at this. The Phoenix is going to dive on top of this, but the Oracle does not even go down, and the Phoenix... Ooh, Phoenix also stays alive, but here comes a committed pressure from Neve. It is six stalkers to three. A couple more stalkers are warping in, though. I don't really know that Neve is really going to be able to punch on through that being said he's up three workers and he's got more tech on the way his blink will be slower of course but the pressure he's put on the map sure pgb into who's pgb into house sure he just happened to paste your uh your two your two-factor authentication in in the chat and you're just trying to now pass it off Okay, so here come the stalkers. One one stalker, or oh, actually one stalker will go down. Blake's not yet done here for Neve. So playing around the line of sight and everything else, this is a fantastic position for Astray to try to find some way back. I mean, he's not dead in this game, don't get me wrong, but uh, trying to find uh, some lost advantage in this game, or at least try to eke out an advantage in this game from a minor deficit. This, this, the Zealot finally dies, but that's fine. He gets scout on the third base. Astray says, okay, you know, my third base is faster. I'm okay with that. Um, Resource the last I'm really only down by a zealot. I, in fact, he's a head and worker. So, yeah, Stray is very happy with how this game is going. He's getting into charge uh, quicker. I don't believe he has a forge just yet. So that's really going to be the sacrifice he's made in this game to find these other advantages. He will not have plus one for quite a while. But if he wants to take with, say, blink and charge, plus one will not really be all that relevant. Most welcome, Goliath Online. Hope it works out for you. Uh, don't know. I know TI doesn't do much with actual, like, co-ops, uh, co-curricular things, but they have a big internship program. So Adept now is going to try to find his way into the natural, but really not getting all that much as Estrella. He's just going to have to batten down the hatches for the next little bit of time. And in fact, with the forge going down, I mean, he's not going for some sort of weird, uh, charge lot. Blink stalker all in. Adept tries to, oh, Adept will complete a shade into the main base here. It's going to get one probe. Maybe, yeah, it's going to get the probe. But it's going to sacrifice his life for the cause. There's Neve on the other side. Plenty of stalkers here, though, and with a shield battery, it's not going to get that much done. So Neve's timing is going to really gravitate around this forge, completing his plus one. I assume, yeah, we're, yeah, Chronos are going to drop down here for Astray as well. So uh, game one ended rather quickly. Game two looks like we are all primed to move into some fancy schmancy late game PvP, which is where these two players absolutely excel. More than anything else, Estrella and Neve both are so damn good at the PvP late game. Oh, he's going to look for the... Oh, he doesn't get it. Nice idea. But it's only one stalker. Really not that big of a deal. He's going to be able to knock this one down, though. Uh, Observer means the the end of the of an era of, I'm going to drop stage traps everywhere and I'm going to kill you with it. Well, I'm going to make sure I don't die with it. Having said, an Observer being done for Neve as well means he blinks on top, knocks the Observer down, and now he's got a vision advantage here trying to find his way in. But Estrella's going to have to back up once again. He does not have plus one. Neither side does, but again, Neve now blinks forward. A good blinks backwards from Estrella for the moment, but he's going to be forced back. 
nice decision making there from Neve, understanding that he can get the observer which gives you that little bit of vision advantage which means your stalkers are going to be able to take a more positive trade and you can also be sure that Astraea can't move too far forward because he's worried about stasis traps and he's just never going to have as nice of a retreat so great job there Aneem taking advantage of the vision differential as Neve's fourth base does finish up it's going to be done pretty soon for Neve as well I love Phoenix and Sentries uh yeah I mean I'm not a big fan of say uh, Soul Trains or uh, Immortal Sentry all ins I if I had uh, my fill of those thank you Ravagers I'm glad you exist even if they do cause other problems but still and I I Phoenix Wars are interesting but a seven game series of Phoenix Wars is uh plus so Okay, here comes the army of Australia. Knocking down a little bit of scouting, but now with Disrupt... I think we're only single Robo. Yeah, single Robo Disruptor right now. Uh, Neve getting his second Robo with his Robo Bay, but for the moment, Australia has a much more technical army. Disruptor Shot's going to go down, not really quite getting the range. There is another one where that came from, and if Australia can beat these Zealots in, and that is always going to be rather nice because then you just drop a glowing ball of death on their head and then call it good. But notice how defensive Astraea is being with these disruptors. He understands that they are the linchpin that is holding his entire defense together. So, especially as he's only on single robo, he has to make sure he doesn't lose them. And by the way, Astraea's fifth base is just about done. Neeb showing no designs on the fifth base just yet. Instead, he is choosing to be aggressive. Here's Oracle's fly forward. Good revelation. Second ish, second valuable bit, of course, of Stalker's Blink forward, of uh, keeping your disruptors back because they don't get revelated which means you don't really suffer from the vision disadvantage that oracles normally provide. So here comes Neve. As Zealot will fall, of course, and that's fine. And Neve will have a plus two timing. Plus two versus plus one, but it's going to be around the time that both players, they max out. All right. So there we go. We're going to see the stage traps fall. Astray is not going to be baited out by that one. And now here comes his army. It is not quite as bulky, certainly not as what his opponent has, but he's going to find pressure onto the fourth base of Neve. Zealous find their way in. Oh, Neve. Oh, almost not paying attention, but Disruptors now, they're going to find their way a little bit forward. Stalkers blink forward on top of that one. Disruptor number one falls, but two more balls go out. Luckily for luckily for Neve, he's out of position or he's uh, actually in a good position. Stalkers blink forward. One Disruptor falls. I don't think he got the second one now, but oh man, what a flank there from Neve. Astraea thought he was safe, thought he was health happy and healthy, but he was in fact not. Zealots are actually gonna get stuck behind the stalkers here. Disruptors do not have their shots right now, so the push me pull you continues. Neve onto the other side of the map. Now shield battery overcharge is still a powerful drug. And I believe yes, this is now two robo disruptors. So Astraea should be okay. Single disruptor's gonna get it. Not actually get anything. Oh, I guess by it kind of forced the stalker to go down. Shots out once again, and ooh, the flanking disruptor from behind. Astraea gonna get what he wants for. Stalkers blink forward, knocking down all these disruptors, and instead, wait, no, that's not a flanking disruptor. Astraea just forgot about it. So here comes Nee on the backside, though. This last disruptor, he's gonna look for a bounty, and he's gonna get, ooh, two, three disruptors will fall, but on the right side, Stalkers blinking backwards, getting on top of the mineral lines here. The army of Astraea is just, well, it's just not what he needs. Uh, pure and simple. Yes, Neve has to be careful. He has to be a little slow in his aggression. But now Stalkers again, they're going to knock down another Disruptor. And Zealous charging into an Archon are never really what you want. So Robo falls. Now it's one Robo to two Stalkers again. They blink forward. Another Disruptor falls. And this actually should do it, folks. The uh, the Oracle's doing a damn fine job of killing probes, knocking down the Zealous that run in. And yeah, more Zealous, of course. They will warp in, but they're going to run into an Archon. And even if they kill it, even if they kill it, I'm not sure it matters because here comes the disruptors of Neve now. Stalkers blink forward. That last shot of the disruptor is going to go down. Astraea, he thought he could get aggressive, and that answer was incorrect. 22 workers have died. Yeah, more stalkers warp in, and the Phoenix is, you know, it's doing something. Uh, but Astraea's lost one base. He's going to lose a bunch of probes on another. The disruptors are being kept in a great spot to knock down the rest of this army, and it is 24 army supply to 77. So, as much as I would love to hype out and say, there's a shot, there's a chance, there's a miracle. It would truly require a miracle at this point. I uh, know. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Stalkers again. Another Disruptor falls. Plus three on the way for both sides, but more Stalkers arrive here from Neve. Yeah. There, it's really all over about the crying. There's there's not much that, that Australia can do 
anymore. Disruptor is actually not getting much of anything, but Stalker's getting blink in. Uh, the big problem for, for Neve, of course, is, well, first of all, he's the Oracles he's not using, but he doesn't really have reinforcing ability. Uh, he doesn't have a War Prism. So this army is, is slowly getting cleaned up by Astraea. But the, then more stuff comes in. It's like, okay, well, yeah, Astraea, you're, you're kind of slowly killing the stuff that's here, but look behind you. There is a bunch of DTs. There we go. That's what's going to tap out. DTs kill off that last mining base that Astraea had. Neve, 2-0. In the upper right, in the red, he's up two now. Will he make it three? It's Neve. In the bottom left, in the blue, he is down two. Playing from Valencia, Estrella. Hey, the Andalorian. Thank you so much for the follow. Glad you're. Uh enjoying the well i guess three hours passes of our stage so again we're looking at data c data c is a map that has a low ground or that has a natural ramp so it is a map that you go one gate expand on we saw trigger and astraea do this where they both went oracles and it was really weird i don't know i don't think that was eh, no, i don't think it was data c um we're gonna have to see where we go from here what is the double blind what's the fake is there a fake is it a deep fake on data c how deep does the how deep does the fake go on data c and data C. Well, I don't know who I forget whose map this is, but excellent job on the naming convention. On data C. On a water map. Love to see it. Okay, Stargate drops for Neeb. This race is going to be slightly slower, but. Actually, he's going to be eh, about five seconds slower. Except he's not going to build one. Oh, interesting. So we do have some deviation in place. Stalker's getting chronoed out here by Astraea. No Stargate. And generally, you get your Stargate because it's just super flexible. It provides you the Void Rays you need to defend. It provides you aggressive options. It, uh, you can go into Phoenix play if you want because Phoenix play. Um, but we're not going to see a Stargate coming out of Astraea here. At least not for a while, as he's built a stalker, he's built a sentry. And with the second gateway going down, Australia's going to do something that is, quote-unquote, more standard. But not certainly not standard to a one-gate expand. Very curious to see how this is going to work out for him. In fact, looks like he wants to get a bit aggressive here. This probe feels like a pylon probe. I mean, it may be for a rescout, but it does feel like a pylon probe. So first, uh, Zealot, of course, the Neeb is made. He's going to run its way onto the other side of the map. It's just, that's what you do. Because you got to build that pi that uh, Zealot to prevent your natural from being blocked for forever and in, in, in a day. There we go. Pylon is going to go down. And then when you don't really need any more, you send it across. So Zealot finds its way into the mineral line, but there is a sentry and there's a stalker there. Zealot will never kill anything. At least it shouldn't. So... Zealot falls, gets a scout, says, okay, two stalkers a century. That actually tells me that you're really not going Stargate. This pylon is done, though. And did Oracle, looks like Oracle, yeah, didn't get anything as there's a, yeah, yeah, oh, no, good stasis trap, I guess. Denying a lot of gas mining. So, actually, we'll, we'll take that. Oracle gets a little bit of damage on the backside. Wants to be very careful to not die, and it does. Good micro there from Neeb. Uh, but there is, that's not an Oracle. That's a second probe on the map. Australia going for rather quick blink. And this was just a pylon for adepts to find their way into the main base. And uh, there is no probe in this wall. This is actually going to be a big, well, with four stalkers, it's going to be fine. <laughs> well, if you had Juke, maybe. Okay, one worker is going to go down. That's a guarantee. It's going to be two even. That's also a guarantee. But if you get, say, less than four, you're actually very happy with things. So he's only going to get three there. Nice job, Australia, keeping thing, keeping the damage minimal. Or for Neve to even the damage minimal. Excuse me. There we go. Neve dropping an extra gateway. His blink will be slower than Estrella's will be, but he will have 
couple extra gateways going up to four. I am worried about this Dark Shrine, though, as uh, Neve has found, of course, the, the warp in position. But uh, the Dark Shrine, when you just have Oracles, Oracles are really not the best thing uh, to use against that. It really isn't. So we're going to have to see a Robo maybe from Neve, or we might just see Estrella go and take his first win of the series. And here come the stalkers of Australia. I mean, these stalkers are going to run into a rude awakening. They will not have enough. And even though their blink will be done, they're just going to have to blink, blink, blink back on home. That being said, they're going to deny the third base for a time. Is uh... well, We're going to have to see what... I mean, that, that was Neeb posturing to take a third as stalkers actually find their way into the main base. But look at Neeb's posturing here. He's used the Stalkers now, but he, want, he wanted to deny the blink back out of the low ground. Uh, that being said, Stalkers of Australia finding a little bit more, and we should see them just recall pretty soon. Uh, certainly, blink is done in five seconds. Stalkers are going to... Oh, no, they're going to be able to blink at the low ground because blink is not done in time, and the positioning that Neeb had uh, cultivated earlier is not there anymore, but now here comes Neeb on the chase. Getting four Stalkers as he looks ready to get some aggression would be really nice for the man. And there we go. He's going to blink on forward. Uh, Stalkers kind of staying around on the high ground, but oh, look at that trap. Doesn't quite get enough though, but you know, here's a significant stalker lead here for Neeb. It is 14 to 7, but DTs are active or they exist on the map as oracles. They look to fly in, but they're not spending their energy or they're spending their energy on things that's not detection. So this looks good. Sure, fine. DTs onto the other side of the map. I don't know that there is a. This is a problem. Oracles finding value and they do have some energy, and but they don't. It's only enough for like one or two revelations. So 10 workers have died. If Neeb is going to be able to survive this stalker's blink forward, another stalker falls. It's going to be great, but now DT's in the main base. Oh, yeah, that sentry doesn't even get a full warp in here. It's going to be a recall on everything. You're going to have to pull all your workers to one base. Get a good revelation there. One DT falls. And now the second DT in the main base. Six, seven workers will go down. Make it eight. Make it nine. Do we have enough for a revelation? We do, but 10 workers. 11 workers will die. So at the end of the day, kind of equalizes it, actually. But now here comes the army of Australia onto the other side of the map. Army supplies are relatively equal. And there's no shield battery at the third base. Robo, of course, is on the way. And it's going to be a chrono for an observer. First and foremost, you need to make sure that you can go and actually mate. You need to make sure that you have the detection that you need. So now here comes the army of Neve. Heals the high ground, though. It's going to be hard for Stray to make that happen. And Neve has his Robo. He's not built. In his, he's, he's not oh, built. That is ballsy. He's sending his, his oracles across the map, and he's chronoing out an immortal. I, I mean, if it works, it works. That was ballsy as hell. I don't think it's going to work out for him all that. It's not going to end the game. The DT is not deciding to move in, but it's not going to be the best possible. I mean, I think you just get an observer. And this is a low stalker on the wall. DT is going to be able to punch through this really quickly, but I, I guess uh, Stray is not going to go for it. And there we go. That's a dead DT. But Estrella, he is he's committing rather hard on this tech path. He's got DT blink on the way. Now, we got to point out, of course, Neve kept his third base alive through the entirety of this. So he's been able to build three probes at a time, not two. His economy has been marginally better because he did kill the third base of Neeb over the course of that chaos. Now, I think this game slows down a lot. I mean... Astray is getting active on the map, sure, and he does have plus one on the way, and DT Blink is always a, a guiling idea as the target Blink forward. One at Oracle goes down, they, oh, they get two, and that's a lot of agency lost on the map for Neve as Astraea really starting to... You look at the supply, and it's not super significant. It's one worker. It's, it's three army supply, but you just kind of... You look at the map, you look at the, the pacing of this game, and it really does feel like this is a game where Astraea is starting to take the lead in just a little bit, just a tiny bit. We have to see what works out for him, though. Look how many DTs have been warped in. There are four on the map right now. Stalkers blink forward. Trying to get on top of an immortal, and they do. They get one. Are they going to get a second? Yes, they will. Neve says, I, I don't care about tempo. I'm going to just run right on through you. And charge is done in one second. So Zealots are far more powerful now. It is one immortal to zero, actually, because Neve has lost all, or Estrella has lost all of his. And now, we got to remember that, that gateway, that pylon, from the beginning of time, it is still there. So now Stalkers are going to blink in, but Shield Battery is, is doing something about that one. It's actually 
going to get targeted on down quick enough. There's a second Immortal here. Now Probes are going to get pulled. Does Astraea have what it takes to hold here? It looks like, I think we just know the Observer. Yes, the Observer did go down. So DT's getting their, not their pound, their, <laughs> their ton of flesh here. Astraea just has to hold on long enough for the DTs to find their value, but 18 workers have died. The mineral line is the problem here for Astraea. He loses more and it's a recall. DT's in the main base though. They're getting six workers. Where is our detection? Where is our gosh darn detection in this game? Probe is going to get pulled in the natural where there is unobserver. Unobserver. There's only one. But eventually the Dark Templar should fall. 12 probes have died. As the DTs now find their way into the main base. 15 workers pay that price. And I don't know. He was not going to find this. Was it? A oh, he blinked in the natural. Oh, DT blink is such a powerful thing. He's using the right hands and... Astraea, he's, he's got some powerful hands here. 23, 24 workers are dying. Where is the Observer now there? Oh, it's DT? It's, it's got to be dead now, right? Yeah, it's dead. Now into the third base. They find so much more. Neeb has tried to be so greedy with his Observer. He got one. He bought it He bought it super late as well. He got an Immortal out first. And yeah, he wasn't punished for that one, but he's punished for this. He lost one Observer. He only had one at home. Now he's building more, sure. Now he's been taught the lesson of his own, uh, of its own hubris, but he's now down 20 workers from position. He was in a fantastic spot. He only just had to hold the DTs, uh, but he couldn't. He didn't handle it well enough. Now stars though, they're gonna blink on forward. And uh, the strength of this army from Neeb is, is a powerful one with these immortals. But DT's now gonna find the fourth and it is undefended. No static defense, no cannons, no shield batteries, nothing like that. Luckily, I guess luckily enough for Nee, but he doesn't really have... He wasn't mining from it all that much. Only two workers there. Sorry, though. They're going to play on the low ground once again. Trying to knock down this army from Australia, lest he get too adventurous. There we go. Straight for the first time in this game. We'll lose an observer. We'll take the negative end of a detection trade. But Neeb, you've got four probes on the way to time, but so too does the Stray. He's on four Nexus. Well, I think that Nexus just finished, but he's on four Nexus now. He can do that. Plus two on the way as well. Neeb cannot afford that one. Stalkers blink forward, trying to get on top of the Immortal. They will. So one Immortal will fall. Stalkers, look at this surround, though, that Neeb has been able to build for himself. I don't know that it's going to be enough because more Stalkers rallying on in. But the supplies right now, they are fairly even. So Neeb actually, he's going to blink forward. He feels confident. There are a lot of low Stalkers here from Australia that he can look to target on down. But no. They got to back up. That being said, the worker count has roughly equalized. Resources lost is near identical. In, uh, army supply, pretty similar. It is plus two for Australia. Really the, the big differentiating point or the big uh, different differentiating factor at this point. As another uh, observer for Neve will go down, and well, we know how important that is to Stalker as well. We're gonna blink back. Uh, plus two is done for Astray now, so Neve has to be very careful. He has to sit around his static defense. He has to really hold this core four, which does buy room for Astray. He's double expanding. He's got three. He's got nine o'clock. He's got six o'clock, and maybe he only gets one of those up. But even still, he's gonna find himself up at least one base on his opponent, maybe even two. As another observer does go down. Only two remaining on the field for Neeb. And notice he's going observer speed. He understands how important observers are in this late game setup. When it the game moves away from blink stalkers and they move far towards kind of charge lot blink DT ideas. Okay, but here comes, what is that? Two DT, uh, one DT, three charge lots into the main base of Neeb. Is, uh, where's the other damage happening? Um, I guess it was just in the main. So, Stalkers are going to blink in, and there's actually plenty of detection there, so that should be fine. War Prison, though, it does get out for the moment. Neeb takes more economic damage, but he does he does kill the harassment in exchange. I know Stalkers blink forward again. Uh, Stalkers blink backwards for Neeb, but Disruptors are out on the map now. And that makes it a lot harder for Neeb to do what he was doing, but I think he's okay with this. I think he's going to be very okay with the game state right now, because, again, he's up two bases. Yes, he's only up 10 workers, and that is not the end of the world for Neeb, as long as he's able to trade somewhat cost-effectively, which he has been. But it's the prospect of already having the map control of two extra bases that when your main and your natural start to mine out, it does make a big difference. And even if we look at the worker count, I mean, the natural is only four mineral patches. The main 
only has four soon to be two mineral patches it's more than two bases and it's more than a 12 worker lead because Estrella's on 90 probes it does mean that the remax of neve is going to be really big but if you just throw charge lot dt at your opponent until they, they die what do you need in a big army It looks like plus two is going to finish up here for Neve. He's got a brief window now where he has equal upgrades, but pretty soon plus three is going to be done. Uh, does Neve have charge? Yes, he does. Australia actually surprisingly doesn't, considering the style that he is playing. But Disruptors, again, they're going to find their way forward. Uh, plus three is done in 10 seconds, but for now, Neve can be pretty confident in taking this fight. But now Stray, he he backs away from it. And Neve, uh, maybe this buys him an opportunity. Take the three o'clock base. Establish your, uh, your fifth. Yeah, it's not a sixth, but at least it's a fifth. There's more more cannons go down, buying the time, really. Oh, wait, is a straight paying attention here? Uh, yeah, yeah, he fans out and he blinks backwards, but I felt like something Neve could have just lunk on top on. Even still. Disruptors are a powerful zoning tool and Neve will re regain position on the high ground, but now Neve on the, well, actually on, he's got, he's at the point where he wants to play with two armies. So, question is how does Neeb split his army up here Neeb actually has his own DTs and that's not something that Astray is totally prepared for but he's cannons wherever he needs to be a stalker now they're gonna blink their way into this fourth base of Neeb a couple defensive DTs they warp in and uh, there's detection though it's not really gonna do all that much but here comes the army of Neeb on the backside. he finds himself supply block for the moment he does lose that Nexus but if he's gonna be able to maybe knock down this army it's gonna be okay that being said Neeb says no or Astray says no he finds his way backwards he kills two disruptors on the backside gets some more stack defense down and yeah, he only got four workers, but he might just get two. I think he will get two Nexus here. And that is uh, that is a valuable tries initiation. Look at this around here from the backside. Disruptor shots actually it gets a little bit, but not really a lot. Oh, good splits there from Estrella, but even still, Neeb looks like he carries this one. Disruptors are powerful units, the big spinny balls of death. They carry the day. And what looks like an incredible surround. What looks like truly an incredible uh, engagement there from Australia. Now Neeb finds himself up 20 army supply. He's going to be able to find his position on this bottom side base. The recall for an observer, I think. Disruptors again, they're going to find their way. Uh, but this base is dead. Australia will lose one of those bases he was so happy with about. But Neeb, while he has the three o'clock base, he's not mining from it just yet. Only on 75 workers and stock is blink forward getting a disruptor, but now they don't have a blink defensively. Looks like it will not matter. Supplies have equalized once again. Neeb is just not mining nearly. It's a double the income, but now the Starks are going to play forward on top of these disruptors, trying to make something happen. Yeah, the first fight for Astray didn't work out all that well, but what about the second one? About What about 11 Z's? Lunch, supper, tea time, because Astray has all of these things and more as he blinks into the right o'clock, <laughs> the right o'clock, the three o'clock base. Probes are going to get pulled, but uh, I mean, you really want to pull probes against 3-1 Stalker, uh, Stalker Zealot? I don't think so. 11 probes die, but looks like Neve is going to be able to hold for the moment. He blinks forward, tries to get more Stalkers. A nexus on the six o'clock position going up once again as well as the upper left corner look at the income three thousand minerals to two thousand now it's straight is actually not mining much gas at all that may become impactful later on uh, considering how heavily astray has been leaning into this dt idea is probably going to get pulled north side and that's a dead nexus but also it it's telling us it's telling astray or telling me where astray is extra bases that being said Australia will be able to knock down the fifth base of Neve and actually uh, Australia is doing a, or uh, Australia is doing a good job of pulling his probes away but I think these probes should die anyways this is another dead Nexus third base falling down defensive DTs actually there's no detection here now there's detection it arrives the DTs they got to run away blink backwards but we're in a base trade we're in a base trade Australia remember he's down to zero he loses this game. He's got to qualify through the lower bracket. Neve, he's playing with house money. He can do whatever he wants. Even losing this game is not going to be the end of the world. He has two maps to give before he truly has to be worried here. And let's see, Neve, he's down 20 army supply. He's down a single upgrade. He's lost his fourth base. He's about to lose his third. There we go. Uh, his opponent into the natural, but he has a lot of disruptors. And I don't think Astrea. Astrea doesn't have any, so it's going to be a recall here. And uh, Neve is just going to be forced to blink out now. There's a little bit more mining from Neeb. As he, again, he's got to run away because that's a lot of charge lots with an additional armor upgrade. They're tanky boys. And oh, the surround coming in once again. The flank, but Neeb is trying to find his way into the wall so he can blink on over it. And he gets out for the most part. 
So it is a 40 army supply lead. It is a worker lead for Astraea as well. But it is a tech lead for Neve. Two disruptors to zero. So it's really hard for Astraea to take this fight, even with the flanks that we've seen happening. So now, he finds his inside track into this, well, what is almost the last mining base, or at least the last really nice functional mining base that Estratus have, but probes are not going to get pulled into this fight. Neeb says, ah, yeah, I'm not going to try to reestablish an economy once again. It is now or never. Probes now running on in. Look at his buffer for the Zealous as they make their charges. You need time for the disruptor shots to happen, and I'm not sure that it is going to be enough. The probes actually just on hold position. They don't even really care about fighting. They just need a body block, but it will not matter at the end of the day. Disruptor shots are good. They're not good enough. Estrella, a hell of a game three. We move to four. In the upper left, up two to one. This will no longer be a queen sleep, but maybe it can be three one. He is Neve. In the bottom right for Alpha X, looking to send us to a game number five. It's Estrella. Uh, when we, we, we were talking about what maps you one base, one base expand on or what or one gate expand on what maps you don't uh moon ba moon dance is, is pretty certainly a map that you you don't uh there's a ramp sure and if you're astraea you you might or if you're max packs you might wish to anyways i ogre fate i have the food but i need to eat it also i'm not sure that any sort of meal delivery service exists where i live i live in the middle of nowhere and uh, even if it existed, most restaurants close at 9. It's 9.16. So, like, I have the food. I have it prepped. I made uh, a some Moroccan chicken with a mayo yogurt sauce where I made the mayo myself, and it is delicious and some roasted veggies. But I need to be able to eat it. That's the big deal. So this is a quick robo here from Neve. Is this gonna is this this just gonna be three gate robo? Well, there's the third. So three gate robo on the way from Neve. Is Estrella actually he doesn't take the natural? He instead takes the the less efficient base, but the fact that the base is less efficient doesn't actually really matter up until the point where a base is fully saturated, or where the equivalent base is fully saturated. So by Australia, by taking this one, he may be able to convince Neve that he's on one base when he's not. It's kind of the play there. I don't believe Neve has seen this. Yeah, no, he hasn't. He just got to the main. He said, ah, there's no natural. I'm here. Does he Shadow. find his way bottom side now? That's the real big question. No, he's not. He's going to find sentries, and that's three sentries. I mean, three sentries is an expand idea. So that should tell him enough. Yeah, okay. Yeah. At the very least, he cancels the shield battery. He says, I don't really need that. I don't really need to worry about that. And Estrella does have a full scout. He says, okay, I see the robo. I see the three gateways. That is everything I need to know and more. So we should start to see some shield batteries go down. And notice what he does. Okay, well, this is a mistake here. I was going to say, you notice he kind of, he tried to rally the probes over to that pocket natural to say, oh, yeah, Neve, but don't pay no attention to the man behind the mirror. I'm, I'm not expanding. Uh, but unfortunately, that last probe, last probe found its way over. And Eve is, of course, waiting for the next round of stalkers and more importantly, the warp prism. Let's try to bust on through. But I mean, with three sentries and a shield battery and a robo on the way and a third gateway on the way, this is a, it's three gate robo on one base versus what will soon to be three gate robo on two bases. Okay, Island will go down. And I think this natural is just, is just dead. Good force field there from Neve. Probes falling as well. So now it is it's three gate robo on one base versus three gate robo on one base, but Neve's three gate robo has production faster. 
is going to be the thing. So more stalkers warping and look at Neve here. He's positioning himself forward to make sure that he well, doesn't run into problematic force fields, I guess. But the Nexus is now down. Question though is how does... Okay, so Neve is... Neve is aware. Straight is aware of the potentiality here, but he's going to just put a bunch of stalkers on forwards. He takes the fight right here, but here come the probes. And oh, the war prism goes down fully loaded inside. But the stalkers on the north side, they're going to get at least one. No, they're not. They're not going to get a sentry shield battery. Overcharge is a powerful thing. Seven probes have died, making it maybe a little bit more, but the entire army of Neve has fallen down. Astraea in a fantastic position to make a hold here. That was incredibly well done. I astray. He knew what Neve was going to look to do. He set himself up for it and he punished it hard, hardcore. Oh man, that was, that was sexy for Maximum Angel. Sexy as hell. But now Neve, he's expanding. And astray expanding at a more reasonable position as well. question now is though is whether Australia will be able to cancel this one so he's got what is that uh three oh oh okay so here's what he's look he wants to do there are a bunch of stalkers here there are four stalkers on the low ground and he says hey Neve, i want you to run down i want you to contest this and then the three centuries in the war prism they're gonna century they're gonna force field off the ramp and then he's gonna just elevate her he's just gonna warp in into the main base that's the goal there are actually four centuries in that war prism now but it looks like Neve will not fall victim to his wiles, will not fall victim to his false games. He will just let the Nexus, ne Nexus expire, except playing at a minor deficit instead of falling uh, falling subject to a game ending idea. All right, you, you know what I want to do? I want to see him do though? Drop all the sentries in the main base and hallucinate just a ton of stalkers. So Neve has to like really overreact and then find out it's nothing. Now we find Neve or Astray. He's down two workers. Actually, the double immortal drop is causing a little bit of havoc here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Observer goes down, but four workers have died, and immortals they will continue to drop. And uh, immortals in a war prism are pretty much untouchable until you have uh, some method of truly getting on top of the war prism. So Neve uh, opening up a bit of a worker lead. Now, sure, he's long distance mining. His economy is not incredible for the moment, but. He's able to keep finding this value. He's going to be very happy with himself as immortals continue to find a little bit more. Of course, immortals, they one-shot probes. So really, that's what Neve is looking for. Uh, maybe some stalkers, free shot stalkers. So you're going to find some value there. Yeah, you say block them in the base, Ogre Fade, but that's not exciting. That doesn't end the game. He was kind of, he was probably going to get that Nexus anyways. But if you blocked him out of the base, then he could cut down on production. Then he could tr then he could actually end the game. But look at this. Oh, oh, good job there from uh, good job there from Neeb or from Australia. Excuse me. He got him. He got an immortal. That really is not supposed to happen. And now, I mean, the damage that this is half. You're not one shotting workers anymore. Okay, so both players, they're taking the, the safer base right now as their third. Okay, Neve now rallying across and Australia had a great position to well, find an advantage, certainly, but I wonder if Australia has been teching a little too hard. Because this army from Neve is pretty damn terrifying. Yeah, he lost an immortal, but it's still two immortals here. It's a ton of stalkers. It's a bunch of sentries, and Australia doesn't have any shield batteries in his natural, so he's not really worried about that. Oh, good force fields, but no warp person. That's just a dead immortal. So now it's two immortals to two. Stalkers, they warp in. Probes are going to have to get, they're going to have to get mo mobilized here because there is no mobility in this army from Australia. He's got Colossus on the way. I'm not sure Colossus will ever matter. And I guess they're, okay, there's a Warp Prism now, 
And the force field's actually going to be rather nice, but the, the scariest point for the Stalkers is one where the Warp Prism is kind of can save them anyway. So, Probes again going to get pulled. The natural is starting to fall here. Warp Prism of Australia taking damage. That Neeb is really not again. Probes. They run in, they run out Stalkers, they blink forward, and now the Warp Prism is dead. Neeb, he's pulling the trigger in this game number four, and he is just sandwiching, punching on through. Neeb, 3-1. He advances on to TSL 9.